Hey there, welcome to another daily vlog. Hope you guys have been enjoying these. They've been fun. Today I'm home, I'm not going to the farm today. Got some seeds to start, got some other projects. Talk to you a little bit more about how things have been going at the farm and daily vlogging, all that stuff. Let's get started. Well guys, not gonna lie, it's been a grind. The balance of the farm, home, YouTube, it's been a grind. Been enjoying it, but I'm just tired today. And I have so much more respect for daily vlogging. I, I mean, I followed people that have done it before for shorter or longer periods of time, and I've always sort of been amazed by it. And man, it's crazy. I mean, you work all day. If you're you know, farming or whatever you're doing, you're, you're have to be on camera all day and film, and then at night, you gotta edit the video and make sure you get it up. And then get some sleep quickly, get back at it the next day. So about halfway through this daily vlogging experience and yeah, I'm learning a little bit about filmmaking and uh, work balance and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I'm gonna try to stick to my initial goal of trying to do this for a month. I think I can do it, we'll see. So today I am seeding patty pan squash, my favorite squash. We're gonna get these into the new beds at the farm in a couple weeks. They don't take long to, uh, to germinate and to get big enough to transplant, so these are pretty quick. I'm gonna plant a couple beds worth, and then after that, I got another round of lettuce to do because we're just gonna keep planting lettuce. Gotta plan those successions ahead of time so you don't run out, so you always have something growing. So I've grown patty pan the last two years and mixed success. The biggest problem is the squash bugs roll in, you know, June-ish. I don't remember the exact date, but you can fight them for a little while by pulling off the, the bugs and the, and the eggs and stuff. And you see the eggs on the underside of the leaves usually. And you can fight them for a while, but eventually they're gonna win unless you spray something, which we don't. So what I did last year was I had a big push early and I planted a bunch of beds, got the harvest out, and then the bugs came in and that seemed to work great. I didn't have to worry about insect and egg and stuff and it just became a real seasonal crop, which is cool. It's good to have like bursts of things once in a while, especially, you know, if you're selling at market or a farm stand or something like that. It's like, all right, we have patty pan for a couple weeks and then you move on from it. So get these guys in, I'm gonna do some lettuce. All right, got these trays done. Just gotta label them, put them under the lights. And you know, it really is a grind. And I think a lot of us have that sort of hustle culture mentality. I think that's pretty common along, among a lot of entrepreneurs and other people. And I think it, to some extent it's great. I mean, you can force yourself to have really high expectations and goals and, and push towards them. And that's cool. And I think right now I'm in that just bust my butt mode to get the farm rolling get those infrastructure projects done. Those take up tons of time. You know, we spend probably 25 man hours just putting the, the outside walls on that wash station and you know, that could have been 25 hours of planting or harvesting. So yeah, once we get the farm infrastructure basically rolling and start building beds and can start working on the, uh, you know, the actual farming part of it, 
I mean, it's all farming, but you know what I mean, growing food. Uh, hopefully we'll line up some more regular volunteers and interns and take that load off of me a little bit. But I mean, this is my day off today, you know, and I'm home and I still got to plant some trays. I got to tend to my seedlings and some other stuff. But yeah, I feel like after we get this pushed through, now that I'm working really hard, when I back off a little bit, I think it'll feel really good. And part of this is the daily videos. So it's all, it's all in that package. But uh, yeah, all right. Well, today I also, I got to clean up my shed. And you guys probably know that my shed is also like part of it's divided and part of it is a brooder and the other part's a tool shed. And so I got to clean that out today because uh, I got to get some feed tomorrow and get ready for the chicks that are coming in like a week and a half or so. So get these guys labeled and put under the lights. All right, got that cleaned out. It wasn't filming it, but it took me a little while. Happy to get that cleaned out. It's been getting gross in there for a while and just very disorganized and I use this shed for a couple different things. So let me first tell you about sort of the history of this and how I'm gonna be using this in the future. So I mentioned this in some older videos, I'm sure, but this building here, this little shed was here when we bought the property four years ago. And there was actually an, a coop here too that was totally gross and falling apart and we got rid of it. And so the people that owned the house before us definitely had chickens at some point, but it, ha it looked like it hadn't been for a while. And so when I first started with chickens, before I was even market gardening, this shed was my coop. So there's a guillotine door and a ramp on the side, right? You know, the door that goes like this. And this was the run here. And this I thought was a super cool setup. This is pretty fairly predator proof. We put the net on the top and obviously it looks very neglected right now because we aren't using it and we will get that back in order. So uh, I've told this story before too, but our chickens got MG, Mycoplasma galliseptacum. And we, when we got rid of our chickens and started over, I went to a mobile chicken coop system, which is what I've been using now and an electric fence. And so this became not a chicken coop and I started using this as a tool shed because I started market gardening and so I needed that to store tools. So then came the idea of brooding chicks as I was getting new chicks to raise for the farm here. Uh, I needed a place to do that and I was doing it in my garage for a while with like an open box kind of thing and I just didn't want them in there, you know. I, it's nicer when you don't have the, the chicks in your house because <laughs> you, if you guys have ever done that you know that, you know, they start to smell and stuff like that. So what I did here, and I'll show you that in a second, is I actually divided part of the shed. And so part of this is a brooder, which works out really well, and the other part's a tool shed. And then um, after the chicks get to about three weeks, depending on the weather, of course, and how they're doing, I just open the door and this turns into their run, and that section turns into their coop. And depending on how many chickens I have, I can keep them in here for you know, eight, 10, 12 weeks, depending on how many and, and you know, how big they are and stuff like that. So this is a very versatile setup that I have. I wouldn't have definitely just uh, chosen to set it up this way, but I've just, I've had it and it was super easy to convert it. So let me show you what's inside the tool shed so you guys can sort of understand it. All right, so as we walk into the shed here, on the left here, I was keeping amendments and grass seed and stuff like that and I have a scale. This big bin here, uh, was for chicken feed that I could dump like two, two and a half bags in. And then this area over here is usually where I keep bags of feed and I'm out. So I'm gonna go be getting some soon. A uh, bunch of tools in here. A lot of them are at Raleigh City Farm as I've been letting them there, but I still have some in here. And then over here, I basically have a brooder set up and this is all built out of scrap that was laying around the house. So I got a door here, right? And then you can see just it's a basic basic box here and then there's the door and this works pretty well and so I'd leave this chicken netting open here so that when the chicks are little I can just reach right through here and access them and when they get to be a little bit older and they can start flying and stuff I'll, there's some screen over the chicken netting here I'll just pull it across and staple it up so that they can't get out and then this will act as a coop so pretty simple all right and then I have this little gate here and in the run, it's pretty simple. You could see there's the door with the little ramp and the chickens, whenever we get them here, will eat all this stuff out. And I just used the tree in the middle there to attach ropes to string this out. And this, this netting has worked great. Uh, you can see there's a lot of leaves collected over there. I got to clear those out, but this works great, especially cause it's not a, you know, a permanent solution. I just use this for basically brooding and, and stuff like that. And if I really do need to isolate a bird or something like that, I can always throw them in here. So it's just nice to have another area to keep birds, especially if you're like 
oh, I gotta separate this one bird or you have a sick bird or one's being picked on or something like that, you can have an area that they can, you can put them and not have to worry about it. So anyways, that's what's going on here. This is where we will be brooding the chicks when we get them in a week and a half or so. So I'll show you guys how I set all that stuff up. Well, I'm really glad I got the shed all cleared out. I've been putting that off for a while. And every time I go in there, I'm like, oh, this place needs to be cleaned. And it's easy to neglect stuff. We all do it. And it's just, it's a grind. All this is a grind. And just trying to take my free time now and trying to catch up on some products around the house. And, you know, like I got to mow that grass again. Like that doesn't stop growing. I definitely got to mow our front yard, which I don't mow that often. Um, I probably have the worst looking lawn in the neighborhood. <laughs> it's funny, but I don't really care about lawns. I mean, you can't eat the grass, right? Anyways, uh, I've really been enjoying having chickens lately. I, it's been nice having a small flock. Uh, we got 15 and it's just, it's just easy. And you know, it's not a ton of feed and, and all that. And just management, it's, it's, been, it's been great. So I'm really excited to get those chicks and I gotta go pick up some feed soon. We're just about out, but otherwise things are good. Chugging along, gotta go edit this vlog, get ready for the next day, doing the same thing over and over again. And I really appreciate all the, the beautiful comments and support and everything and all the love on this end too, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. Hopefully everyone's staying home, washing their hands, being safe, being responsible. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow.